All well here at Cape Kennedy. Launch at 12.54 Eastern Standard Time in just a few minutes. The astronauts, John Young, Ken Mattingly, and Charles Duke, are in the spacecraft. They've been in there since 10.39 this morning, working on their dials and switches and making sure that everything is ready. They began their adventure at 7.39 this morning. That's when they woke up in their crew quarters, which is nine miles from where we are here at pad 39A. The astronauts normally have routines for breakfast, and here they are having breakfast. The astronauts themselves had to eat steak and eggs. That's a special diet they have, but their guests uh, had other things. Some of them had bacon and eggs. That's Young there, John Young. <coughs> having his breakfast. He's now in the spacecraft on his way to the moon. Other people, Deke Slayton, uh, members of the backup crew, Stuart Rosa and Ed Mitchell, were at the breakfast. Dave Bauer, the leader of their support group. That's Young suiting up. Complicated business getting into those terribly expensive suits. That's Duke. Charles Duke, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, getting into his. And that's Ken Mattingly, getting into his suit. He will fly the command module called Casper for Casper the Ghost as they circle around the moon. <clears throat> Time crew for Apollo and 16. Here they come. This is one of the classic scenes in American life today. The astronauts coming out carrying their life support packages. They're all sealed in there. They get oxygen and all the rest of it from those bags they carry. Other people wearing their white suits getting into the van. It's a nine-mile drive over here. That was earlier this morning. Mrs. Young and Mrs. Duke are here to see the launch. Mrs. Mattingly is expecting a child uh, about the time he gets back, so she stayed home in Houston. This is one of those cameras we showed you before, one of the NASA cameras of the little numbers in the upper left-hand corner. And there they are, getting ready to go up in the elevator into what is called, you know, into the launch tower. Obviously, this is not happening now, everybody. This happened before 10 o'clock this morning. There they are walking across a swing arm from the launch tower into what is called the White Room. The White Room is located next to the space vehicle itself where they sit <coughs> on the top of this enormous rocket. They are about 363 feet up in the air, about 350 feet when they're sitting in there. Way up high there, the top of an enormous building. The test conductor, a man named Skip Chauvin, said, Welcome to the spacecraft. And Young said, Good morning. It's great to be here. And Mattingly, speaking of the weather, said, Good morning. It's a pretty one, isn't it? And so they're in there now, <coughs> sitting, as one astronaut once said, on top of a lot of equipment that was uh, built by people who made the low bid. But it's worked so far, tens of millions of parts, and uh, there's no reason now why it won't work today. As we say, the weather here at the Cape is perfect. They, we are going to try to track this rocket when it leaves here. Uh, we're going to try to track it as far as we possibly can. So you may get today several minutes of marvelous shots of seeing that rocket go out across the Atlantic and up into the air as swiftly as it does. When we were here the last time for Apollo 15, you'll recall we had cloud cover, and the rocket went up and was lost in the clouds very quickly.
But today, as we look out the window here, there are only one or two little tiny clouds, and they're down at what appear to be about the five or 10,000 foot level, and they're hardly clouds at all. And the sky is a beautiful blue, and we should be able to see this going very quickly. And it isn't going to be very long now before it does start to go. The uh, problem with the communications is over. The problem with the gyro, the yaw gyro, is over. <clears throat> the countdown is proceeding into its final stages now. The swing arms are starting to come back, almost all back from the rocket. And... Uh, it looks as though nothing is going to stand in the way of these men getting to the moon, as far as we can tell now. Uh, in just a second or two, we'll have Chuck Hollinshead, the voice of Apollo, with an update announcement. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. T minus 10 minutes and counting. And we just heard from the spacecraft commander, John Young, that Casper and Orion are go for launch. Spacecraft is now on full internal power. Up to this point, it's been sharing its power load with the ground supply. A short time ago, the Astrocom circuit was checked out. This is the circuit that the astronauts will be on during the launch phase. They'll be on this with Stoney, the astronaut communicator here in the Launch Control Center, the Launch Operations Manager, Paul Donnelly, and the spacecraft test supervisor, Skip Chauvin. The crew actually goes on to the Astrocom circuit at the T-minus four-minute mark in the countdown. Our weather continues to look good for launch as we aim toward a 12.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time liftoff. Now at T-minus nine minutes, 11 seconds, and counting, this is Kennedy Launch Control. Casper and Orion are two words that you'll hear about during this Apollo 16 mission. Casper is the... Um, command module that uh, will circle the moon uh, once they get there, and Orion is the lunar module which will land on the moon, Orion. Orion is a star. They chose it because it's bright and important to their navigation. Casper is named after Casper the Ghost, a television uh, comic character, and uh, there is a mixture of both humor and seriousness in those two names. We will be back now, launch in about eight and a half minutes. So we're going to bring you all of that after this word from God. Launch in 7 minutes and 23 seconds now, the spacecraft on uh, various kinds of internal power, everything ready to go here at Cape Kennedy. Should anything go wrong, you'll notice on the top of the spacecraft there uh, what looks like a long pointed nose. Actually, that's called the launch escape tower. And if something goes wrong, even now at this moment, and they have to get away from all that fuel they're sitting on, they can press various buttons, and that is actually a jet. It will pull them off in their spacecraft, off the tower. Uh, it has been armed. It was armed about a half an hour ago, and it's ready to go. Now, if they take off, when they take off, and should something go wrong, that escape tower still is important to them. Uh, up until about three minutes into the flight, if something goes wrong, they can separate from the Saturn rocket below them, be pulled away by that rocket, and dropped about 500 miles out into the Atlantic, safe in their spacecraft. Or if they have trouble even later in the launch phase, uh, the command module can separate and land 3,000 miles downrange. Nobody's ever tried that. Now, let's listen to the voice of Apollo, Chuck Hollinshead. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. 
control. We're now passing the six minute mark in the countdown. Emergency detection system has now been placed in the launch mode. Houston Flight has also indicated that they are go for the automatic sequencer. At the T minus three minutes, seven second mark, the launch will go on the automatic sequencer. And from that point on, the launch will be automatically handled by the sequencer. Coming up on the T minus five minute and 30 second mark, at that time we'll be standing by for a go to launch from Mission Director Chet Lee. Mission Director verifies go for launch. Mission Director Chet Lee from Houston verifies go for launch. All elements now reporting into Test Supervisor Gordon Turner that they are go for launch. Now T minus five minutes, 13 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. 